No, right corner. What is up, YouTube? It's Dr. Zora helping cure you from being a noob. Today, we're gonna go over 12 tips that you probably don't know about Valorant. We got some crazy tips for you. We're gonna show you how to reload faster in this game, how to take ability uses to the next level. Did you even know that you could do this? Or maybe even this? Well, it's your lucky day. I'm gonna show you how to do these tricks and much more in this video. If this video helps you out, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment down below which tip helped you the most. Let's get into it. Jumping right into it, tip number one. This is an essential tip you need to know. If you're like me when I first started playing Valorant, you quickly realized that sounds were very loud in this game. I practically walked wherever I went because I was so afraid that the enemy would hear me and know where my position is, which would give them an advantage. If this is you, look no further, we have a cure. All you have to do is look at your minimap and when you run there is a circle that tells you the radius in which people can hear you. It's a whitish line, if the enemy is within that area, they'll hear you, if not, you're good to go, run like a maniac. Identify common areas of the map where you think an enemy may be. If the circle hits that, they can hear you and you probably want to walk. If not, you can move quicker and rotate to where you need to be. Tip number two, this is a crazy tip that's gonna show you how to reload faster. I'm talking a solid 0 0.575434 milliseconds faster, sort of. When you reload, there is a certain point in the reload animation where your weapon is actually already reloaded and you can actually just take your knife out or switch to your abilities and you're still good to go. This takes some practice and feel for when this is actually happening, but essentially it's around when you stick the animation back into the weapon and then it will be reloaded. This is very useful when you're in a fast paced situation where you need to perform multiple movements quickly. Tip number three, this tip goes right along with tip number two and will actually help you clutch rounds better. The spike has a certain rhythm to it and and based on what rhythm is playing, it determines how long it's been Spike's since the spike's been planted. So we can see right here, we have a chart coming on the screen. If it's zero to 25 seconds since the spike's been planted, it'll beep one time per second. If it goes 25 to 35 seconds, two beats per second, and 35 to 40, four beats per second. And lastly, 40 to 45 seconds, you get eight beeps per second. And this is very useful as a defender to just estimate how much time you have to clutch the round. Do you have enough time to find the players and defuse the spike? Or should you back off and save for the next round? It's also useful as an attacker. If the spike is just recently planted, you know you can just hide and hold an angle and let the defenders push you. If the spike is about to explode, you now know the defender is probably pushing and holding the defuse. And this is a good time to peek out, get that information and eliminate them if they are holding it. You've now denied the defuse and you can immediately hide again after and if you time this right the enemy won't have enough time to defuse anymore and you clutch the round all right if you thought tip number three is good you better stay tuned for tip number four now if you didn't get it from tip number one sound is very important in this game you need to be aware of your footsteps as well as the enemy footsteps but also all the other sound cues that can occur in the game you have gun sounds and certain abilities that can be heard by the other enemy team. I won't go through all of them, but there is a fantastic chart that goes through a large majority of abilities that can be heard. Learn it and memorize it as it'll help you to be more aware of certain sound cues that the enemy may be making, as well as listening into your own sound cues to know if you're giving up your location or not. All right, we got some fancy feet for tip number five. This may be more commonly known if you've been here since the beginning of the Valorant beta, but you can throw abilities and weapons into the teleporters on Bind, and it will go through the teleport and appear on the other side. During a show match between the Riot developers and popular streamers, the developers actually use Rays to throw her nades through the teleporter and into Window, and combining that with Cypher's cage in Window, it slowed down the streamers so much that they couldn't back out because the nades were coming, and they were slowed down from the Cypher cage so they couldn't go forward, and they were just stuck, and they just had to tank the nades at that point and look like complete fools. Some of the best abilities you can throw into the teleporter are Raze's nades, Silva's shark dart, and Sage's slow orbs. You can get a lot of chip damage with these abilities or even land a kill. And with Sage's slow orb, you can really slow down the window push and allow your team that extra time to rotate faster to go and defend the site. All right, tip number six. This one is a big one, so you better be here still, all right? If you're playing any agent with throwable abilities such as Sage, Sova, and even Viper, Brimstone, even Phoenix, you 
want to learn lineups for certain areas of the map. There are a ton of lineups that you can find on Reddit that can be very useful for helping attack a site or defend a site and can really change the way around plays. I won't go over all of them and we will make a video on the most useful lineups for each agent, but to show you how useful these lineups can be, we're going to go over an example from Forzen. So this clip starts off with the spike being planned and the position of the spike is very crucial here. Make sure to pay attention to that. The tough part here for this lineup is it requires Forzen to go all the way back to A lobby, but it looks like he already prepared for that. So he had a wall lined up. He pops it up. So heaven can't see him. Ramp can't see him. And it looks like no one was flanking him either, which sets him up to get to the lineup. And for this lineup, it looks like Forzen goes to the very edge of these steps and then lines up his crosshairs slightly to the right of the tower and slightly below the top part of the tower. And I believe he was also using the corner of the white tower on the left and just goes above that just slightly as well. Sounds complicated, but with practice, it becomes second nature and Forzen is able to toss his poison in the air and it lands right at the spike spot and the enemies can no longer defuse. They have nothing that can block the poison Plus, Forza has two of them, so he's really able to block the spike for a long period of time. The enemy team seems to really be pushing it to see if they can tank the poison and defuse. Unfortunately, they cannot. One person gets taken down, and Forza pushes back, and since the poison doesn't last forever, so he needs to check it just in case they might have pulled off a play. It looks like Silva was trying to find Forza, but he didn't expect the push, so he gets wiped out, and then the guy defusing dies to the poison as well. So you can see how this lineup turned a near impossible situation into a winnable round, and Forza was able to close. Watch. All right, if you're right here, you made it to the speed round. We're gonna go through four tips rapidly in succession. Let's get right into it and we're gonna have a banger right after. So make sure to stay tuned to that. Tip number seven, when using Phoenix's ultimate, if you end up firing at enemies and then fading back to his original form, your weapon doesn't reload. So make sure you do this if you're low on ammo before you go in again. I see so many players, myself included, who go hand with the ultimate, spray a bunch of people and then go back in and have five bullets left. And then they go in again, have that awkward little spray and they get eliminated. Tip number eight, there is a sound cue that gives away Omen's location when he uses his ultimate. If you're close by, you will hear this and you want to use this to your advantage. If he's too close, he's vulnerable and should be punished for it. If you hear a sound and you're pretty far back, your team hasn't pushed yet, grab a few players and go eliminate them quickly and then you can go back into your default positions. You can see here, I heard the sound towards spawn, so I grab everyone there and Omen's pretty much like, oh crap, homie, I think it's over for me, boys. And he's done and we just go back to positions like nothing happened if you don't hear the alt sound then you know he's further away from your team and you want to be cautious of your back tip number nine one thing about omen's teleport is that it makes a sound at the location that he uses it but it doesn't make a sound where he actually teleports this can be very tricky and allows them to pull off some crazy plays that you've probably seen on reddit or youtube a common play that omen can do is smoke himself off and use that sound cue to distract the enemy hide in the smoke and then he uses his teleport to go as far back as he can to grab the frags and eliminate the enemy. All right, we're going back into the fancy stuff now with tip number 10. Phoenix's wall can curve and it can curve quite a bit. Some of you guys may already know this, but if you use his wall and hold your mouse, you can drag it to the left and right and make it curve. This is very useful for blocking off multiple choke points on the map. For example, on Bind, if the spike is planted in the default position, it's likely an enemy is in showers and maybe another person is at A short or U-Haul. What you can do is perform a 180 with your mouse and it will create a semicircle that will block off showers and U-Haul. This will likely cause the U-Haul player to panic and run in as well as the shower player so it's very useful for forcing the players to push you and then you can pick them off as they panic rush it's even more useful that you have a teammate with you one person can defuse and probably make it to at least a halfway point and then you can both look for the enemies that are pushing eliminate them and then go back to the defuse and if you got at least to the halfway point you should be able to finish off the clutch and win the round all right tip number 11 this is a big one playing the spike gives you a point on your ultimate this is very important to note as there are some agents such as sage who has a more useful ultimate than some of the other agents in which you usually want them to get as many ultimates as possible so you want them to plant the spike so they can maximize the amount of rounds that they can resurrect a player make sure before you even go into a site 
that the person who needs the point the most is going to be the one that has the spike and will be playing. I would recommend Sage as the first agent and then from there it really depends on what you need for a round and who is closest to reaching their ultimate ability. Likewise you also get a point for defusing the spike so keep that in mind too after clutching a post plant situation as the defender side and again you want to see whose ultimate is the biggest priority so they can get the defuse. Alright if you made it this far you're killing it buddy and we got the last tip, tip number 12. If a teammate disconnects you will get additional credits plus an orb will appear at your spawn. A lot of people don't know about this or they just forget that this is a thing when they're in game. It happens though whether someone's internet crashed or someone just got very frustrated and rage quitted. We hate to see it but unfortunately it happens and I think Riot's approach to helping the remaining teammates is relatively fair. With the extra credit you'll be able to do a full buy practically every round or at least get close to that and don't forget about the orb. With this you'll be able to get an additional ultimate or two for each half and that ultimate can completely change rounds as well as the tide of the map so make sure someone grabs it. I'm guilty of this as well when it's 4v5 I just forget to grab the orb but hey everyone else forgot as well so it's not entirely my fault. That's all I have for this video if it helped you out make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see from me next. I know a lot of you guys are new players so I want to get you guys prepared for what Valorant brings to the table so let me know what's up. Do you need help with agents? Do you need tips on your aim? Leave them all in the comments down below. I'm Dr. Zor helping cure you from being a noob and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.